but then they invented something. They said, we have a new editor. And what you see, it's what you get. It's a WYSIWYG editor. So, wow! Finally, they're doing something awesome. So I, I tossed my Timex Sinclair computer to the side. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and I decided to upgrade to, uh, at the time, I, I didn't like Macintosh at the time, so I had the Windows 3.1 computer with the WYSIWYG editor. What you see, it's what you get. How awesome is that? So, uh, well, today I have a retina display, and what you see is what you get when you print, so it's a lot better. But anyways, I, I grabbed just uh, this word from computer, uh, you know, geek uh, history. <laughs> so in order to tell you, also in the spirit, there's a, a very important principle. And in the spirit, what you see, it's what you get. So we need to work on, on what we see and we need really to build our faith in that way. You know, Jesus told in Matthew 6 a very kind of obscure passage that no one preaches about it, but I'm going to mention today, where he said, the eye is the lamp of the body. So then if your eye is clear or pure, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light that is in you is darkness, how great is the darkness? And, uh, and I love this passage, and it's been like a motto for my life. And I build all my faith in my life in this. Uh, uh, my eye has to be good. And it's not speaking... Uh, it, listen, we, we cannot just be mystical people that we spiritualize everything. But in fact, here it's a spiritual principle. It's not about the quality of your eyesight. And uh, some of you, uh, the quality of the eyesight is diminishing. And, <laughs> and some of it maybe is close to darkness, I don't know. It's not the quality of eyesight, but it's the, the way we see things. I want to have God glasses. God glasses are the ones you put on and you see everything through God's eyes. So uh, if you have God glasses, uh, you purify what you see. So, uh, in, in terms of your personal life, in terms of your goals, your future, your marriage, you know, everything, how do you see it? If you see it uh, in that perspective, negative perspective of darkness, you cannot expect but darkness to happen. But if you see it in the perspective of light, you will see good things happening. Because what you see is what you get. Yeah. And, and, it's not, and sometimes what you see now, it's not what, uh, what you should see. You should see uh, through the eyes of faith. So through the eyes of, of faith, uh, you know, uh, and we were talking about, for instance, about church things. And about church things, I see something so big that it's hard to describe. And it's hard sometimes to explain. Now, in, in my personal life, I also see these things. You know, it's like sometimes, you know, the month is too long for my salary, when I have a salary. <laughs> it's, 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 sometimes it's hard, and, and, uh, and we have bills to pay, we have things to do, and we're worried. How am I going to meet up my responsibilities? And um, I know some of you here are millionaires, and that's fantastic, that's wonderful. Um, but uh, sometimes this happens. And, and so, if we see things that, oh, I cannot do this, I cannot pay this, I cannot, you know, you know, it's, it's what you get. But if you see yourself differently, you start to receive different things, because that's how faith works. We see what we train our eyes to see. We can see good, or we can see what? Evil. Evil. So, you, you, if you train your eyes to see something, oh. it, it's what you see. Oh, some, some of you are saying, oh, oh. oh my God. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, okay. So, so you, you can train your eyes to see something or something else. You get it? Yeah. All right, so, so that, that's why it's so important that, you know, the principle that, that today we're learning what Jesus was teaching. If your eye is good, your body will be full of light. Why do I need my body to be full of light? Do I really need my body to be full of light to highlight all my imperfections, my, 
perfect imperfection, like the sun says. Uh, why do I need light in my body? You know, I don't know. You know, uh, just dim the light because, please, I don't want uh, those imperfections to be. You no, know, what Jesus is teaching. Listen, when you have the light of God in your body, you're healed. Yeah. You're healed. So you want physical healing? You, your eyes have to be trained to see good, not evil. And, and th this is a principle, principle of faith. And this is the, the uh, Hebrews 11 on the Living Bible that says, what is faith? It is the confident assurance that something we want is going to happen. It is the certainty that what we hope for is waiting for us, even though we cannot see it up ahead. So we cannot see it with our eyes, but we can see it through faith. And through faith, what you see, it's what you get. And we need to have this alive in, in us, and, and it's, it's a matter sometimes of discipline. Now listen, uh, I, I was born in, uh, I, I love my, my family, but I was born in a negative environment. In the sense that they were not very positive, my parents. Uh, and, uh, and so they were always concerned about the future. And they lived, they were born uh, uh, in the season, end of World War II, you know, uh, in Europe, and there was a lack of things, so they stored stuff like crazy. I mean, the pantry was unbelievable. We had, you know, they were worse than the preppers. If there was something happening, we had food for, for six months, you know? And, um, <laughs> and, and not only that, but a mentality of saving. So I was always eating food from two days ago. It's like, you know, if you go to my house and I ask you, you like soup from yesterday? And they say, yeah, sure, so I'll say, come tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> because I really, you know, it, it, it gets to the end. It, that's why I have a, a, a dog. My dog is a scavenger. I, I, I know that vets hate this, but I, I give, you know, my, my dog eats good food. <laughs> Pizza, you know, my dog eats pineapple, eats banana, you know, because, because everything we toss, you know, my basset hound just, you know, <coughs> eats everything. So, so instead of putting to the guy, because sometimes I don't like to toss it, I give it to the dog, it's okay. So. And so they, it, it eats everything. I, I even saw my dog eating salad. It's uh, how hungry the dog is. <laughs> just kidding. But there's this mentality of being married, of thinking, oh, future shop closed. Oh, Target closed. Oh, the war, ISIS. Oh, they're going to behead everybody. And, and you know, there's this mentality of negative things, but we can see it in a different perspective, mm -hmm. right? Yes. It's like the salesman, uh, the, the company that sent two salesmen to Africa to sell shoes, and they arrive in Liberia, and they stay there for a month. They return to the headquarters. They arrive to the headquarters and the, the manager asks, so tell me about your trip and the guy says, it's horrible. You know, we have no success, everybody walks barefooted. There's no, it's, it's, it's a horrible place, we're not going to sell any shoes. Then they ask the other guy, so what's your opinion? Wow, what a place, what an opportunity, they're all barefooted. <laughs> we, we have a huge market to sell shoes. So you see, depending on your eyes, you will get it. And we need to have this assurance of faith. This is a quote from St. Augustine. Uh, it says, faith is to believe what you do not see. The reward of this faith is to see what you believe. Hallelujah. That's deep, eh? Yeah. Yes. That's really deep. So, so we, we need to have the reward of our faith always alive in our heart. Because what you see is what? Yes. Okay. Oh, you're getting it. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> okay, here's the slide. So, let me just, this is one of the passages I like to mention. <clears throat> and today, I believe that in the spirit, there's something about to happen in some of you that have a, 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 a bad eye in the sense that you're not, maybe not a native person, 
But when you look at things, you know, it's like those Christians that can identify all the problems that go around them. <laughs> it's like, you know, they, they, they come here and they say, oh, music is loud, uh, microphone is fuzzy, uh, you know, light is too dim, uh, pulpit is too small, uh, preacher doesn't have a tie, um, you know, uh, sweats too much, sweats too much, uh, you know, and, and, and there's people, they're, they're experts in pinpointing these kinds of uh, things. And, and uh, you can be a Christian and you have this uh, ability, it's a new, uh, it's a, <laughs> an unborn kind of uh, bad gift that uh, gets you into uh, seasons of darkness. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's the reality. Listen, I, I love you, please don't, uh, don't be upset with me. Okay. But the truth shall set you free. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we need to have this kind of mentality. We cannot have a mentality of lack, a mentality of poverty. We need to see things differently. Now, when the people of God uh, were delivered from Egypt, they had to cross the desert and they should have entered the Promised Land. They couldn't enter because of the 12 spies that cursed the land. Okay, and so for 40 years they had to wander around, around in the desert. A whole generation died so they could enter the Promised Land. It's like some churches around. You know, a whole generation has to die in order for God to start doing something there. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so it's very sad what happens in Christianity, actually. But, but it's, uh, when you read the Word of God, you can identify with these things. Now, 40 years later, they're entering into Israel. They're sick and tired of manna. Manna is great, but 40 years of manna, it's not that great. <laughs> All right? Uh, you know, uh, manna is that those seasons in your life in, we, in which we, you have enough to survive another month and another week. And, uh, and some, some are in the manna season. So when, when the manna is over, it's time to conquer. It's not time to retreat back to Egypt. It's time to enter the Promised Land. And so, uh, as they crossed the Jordan River, they approached the first place they had to conquer. Remember, God told them that they were going to conquer the land. The land is yours. So finally, they're getting there. Joshua is one of the survivors. One that saw the land with a good eye. There's another guy named Caleb, I'm not going to talk about him. But there's only these two guys that saw the land with a good eye. So, Here's Joshua ready to conquer. And then God tells them the, 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 the following. This is on the message translation. Joshua 6, verses 3 to 5. God spoke to Joshua. Look sharp now. I've already given Jericho to you. I have already? Given. Is this the truth? Yes. <laughs> is it? Yes. It is? Yes? No? Yes. Yes. yes, but no. <laughs> they still have to have it. But God says it's already yours. It's kind of that promise you have, that promise of healing, that promise, you know. You have it, but you don't have it. Okay, let's continue. I already give it to you, along with its king and its crack troops. I like this translation. <laughs> <laughs> the crackheads. <laughs> Here's what you are to do. March around the city. All <laughs> sorry. All your soldiers circle the city once. Repeat this for six days. Have seven priests ca carry seven ram uh, horn trumpets in front of the chest of the Ark of the Covenant. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times. The priests blowing away on the trumpets. And then a long blast on the ram's horn. When you hear that, all the people are to shout at the top of their lungs. The city wall will collapse at once. All the people are to enter, every man straight on. Now, I know some of you read the story, but I wanted to read the scripture nevertheless. So, here, here's what they had to do in order to conquer the first city. Now, let, let me just uh, tell you this. Jericho wasn't the biggest city. Jericho wasn't the biggest challenge. 
Jericho was the first city. And in order to circle Jericho, it took them about one hour only. So it's not, it's not a big city, one hour to do this. And, uh, but it had something special about that city. The walls of the city were, were very high. That's a Chinese wall, so don't worry, it's not a, the walls of Jericho. But I just found a picture with, a, with walls that are high. So they couldn't see the city actually because the walls of Jericho were so high. Geographically, and the way it was built, they couldn't see the city. You know, some other cities, they couldn't see the city and the walls, but this one uh, has this uh, characteristic. It, the, the city is there, but you cannot see it. Why? Because the, the, the wall is so high. So it's not a huge challenge for three million people to conquer a city that takes about an hour to go around. It's not a big challenge. The challenge is not the size of the city, the challenge is the size of those walls. Now let me tell you that also in our life, sometimes we have these challenges, and it's not that they're so big, you know, but the walls are so big. And so the same principles we learn here, we need to apply to our life. Now, just, just to, to give you the, the idea of what's, what's happening. Joshua got the plan, but he didn't pass the plan to the people. So the people had no idea, they had no idea of what to do. He knew this was a seven day plan, but uh, the soldiers, they, they had no idea. So they had to circle the city in silence, they couldn't speak. All the priests with the horns that they couldn't blow, they couldn't yell, they couldn't say anything, and in silence they will go one hour around the city. All these soldiers in gear, uh, you know, ready to attack, and then they will return to their tent. And I can imagine they returning to their tent and the wife asking, so tell me, how was your day, how was it? Uh, mm, uh, so how many did you kill? How many of those crack guys did you kill? <laughs> you know? <laughs> How many? And, um, uh, none. Uh, we kind of went around the city. Oh, all right. Okay. So next day, they get all equipped. <laughs> they go on the march around the city once again in silence, no word, not knowing what's going to happen. Looking at Joshua, what are we doing here? What kind of strategy is this? And they return to the tent. He arrives to the tent. She has the soup ready, no more manna. It's now it's a rabbit soup with, a, uh, you know, with, with a, a raw cabbages or something. So, how was your day? How was it? How many did you kill? Um, none. So, what did you do? Um, uh, we went around the city in silence. All right. <laughs> So uh, are you following me? Because sometimes we read these things and, and this happened for six days. They're ready to conquer. They're tired of manna. God said, I have already given to you. And they keep repeating the same routine and nothing happens. And listen, sometimes in our Christian life, we feel that we are stuck in the same position or situation. We're doing stuff and nothing happens. We have a vision and we're doing this vision and it's not visible. Your eyes cannot see what is promised. However, by faith, you know what God promised you. And let me tell you that what you see is what you get. They couldn't see the city. They could see just those humongous walls. And they circled the city. They had to be really persistent. And, uh, and uh, your city, our personal city, can be also all the obstacles to achieve the things that we want to see. And, uh, and uh, we, we have to uh, be rooted on the principle that when we obey God, He will fight our battles for us. We just need to be persistent. Sometimes people give up too soon. They give up on the business. They give up of uh, taking uh, this course in university. They give up of a marriage. 
They give up of a child. They give up of a church. They give up of a ministry. They give up of so many things. Because they're doing the same thing and it's like nothing happens. You have to be persistent. We need to know with clarity what God wants from us. And when we know it, we do it and do it and do it and do it like those soldiers. And on the seventh day, now they had the horn, so it was kind of more exciting. <laughs> and seven turns around the city, that's seven hours of walk. We hear. And I can imagine at the sixth time, they're anxious, they're tired. Because now it's not one hour, now it's seven hours going around the city. What a headache! Ram horns, what a headache! I, you know, if I listen to five minutes, I have a headache. <laughs> listen to ram horn for seven hours. <laughs> so at the end, they had to shout and yell. And uh, uh, can you give a shout with me? Yeah. <laughs> okay, one, two, three. <laughs> that was okay. <laughs> but it's not all your strength. But believe me, after seven days, yeah. seven hours, listening to a ram horn, I'm about to shout. <laughs> <laughs> and when they do it, the walls literally enter into the ground. That's what archaeologists found, found, found out the uh, last century, 20th, 20th century. They found Jericho. And there was a debate if the walls fell to the outside or to the inside. There was this huge debate. People had, you know, all kinds of questions. But in fact, they just sunk into the ground. That's awesome. I mean, I love going to the store and the doors open. <laughs> Have you ever happened to you, the doors doesn't, don't open, and you walk into the, 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 the door. <laughs> or you run into Costco and you hit the door with your cart. It, but it's awesome when the doors open. We should have those doors here. You need to buy those doors. Yeah. I love those doors. <laughs> but, you know, it, it was like this, the, the wall just fell down. God just did it. And suddenly, for the first time, they will see the city. For the first time, they will see the city. And what you see is what you get. They couldn't see it. There was just a wall. Maybe your life right now is like this. Something is blurring your vision. Something, or maybe the negativity in your heart, the way you see things, something is not allowing you to see the vision. So, to conclude today, I want to give you some practical uh, things that we need to do in order to have our faith moving up. Alright, are you ready? If you're taking notes, it's fine. Otherwise, some of you, sometimes you take a picture, that's awesome. Now, you need to decide on the end goal first, when you go after something by faith. Let's say, it's that new business. So, forget it. <laughs> Keep your job. <laughs> Forget it, you know? Oh, I want to get a husband. Okay, what kind of husband? Doesn't matter, doesn't matter. I want a husband. <laughs> That's desperation, <laughs> right there. <laughs> it's like that verse, whoever comes to me, <laughs> I'll receive them. You know, if that's desperation, now what kind of husband? I want a godly man, I want him to be a good family man, a good father. Decide on your goal first. Yeah. Alright? And if you don't want to take pictures, I'll put the, the PowerPoint online this time. <laughs> you can download it. Now, now after you decide, uh, you should write down every step of the way in order to get what, what you want. You know, what, what were the steps to conquer Jericho? It was very precise. Going silent, every day, you, walk, you go around, you don't say a word, this is what you do. You do this, and there's kind of a recipe there. And they follow the recipe, and after God told, if you continue to read the chapter, we read that they did exactly as God told them to do. But it is described, they went through every step of the plan. 
You know, God plans things and He wants us to plan things also. So also be realistic and, and describe things. Describe things. You know, I want a husband. I want him tall, muscular. <laughs> I want him, uh, you know, I, I, I want hair. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I want this, I want that, and, and be, you know, I, I'm just kidding, but I, I'm not kidding, you know? You know, describe what you do, what you want, you want a car, what kind of car do you want? Any car. Oh, sure, so I'll take you there to, to the gypsy, there's no gypsies here, so I can say it. I, I take you there, and you get a clunker. No, no, you, you decide what you want, you know? Alright, I want this, no, then if you, if you see you cannot get the Mercedes, you know, go for a Toyota, if you cannot get the Toyota, go for a Hyundai or whatever, you know, but decide what you want and, and then uh, follow each step. And, and then there's something as Christians, you know, here's where some critics, they really get upset, uh, it's when we talk about these things. But you need to build a mental and image, get imagery of what you want. Yeah. It's like you want to do a cruise with your family. Put the cruise on your fridge, you no, know, a picture of a, of a boat on your fridge, somewhere, and start to imagine yourself on the cruise. Yeah. Start to imagine, oh, I'm seeing, I'm sitting with the captain, <laughs> eating, you know, at the dinner table. I'm, I'm seeing myself with my kids running around the pool. I'm seeing myself drinking margaritas, alcohol free margaritas, <laughs> under a palm tree, whatever. And, and, and when you pray also, you know, you, you need to nourish this. Some people say, that's new age. Come on, that's not new age. That's old age. That's Bible age. That's Old Testament age. Because it's the way that God uh, always intended for us to receive things by faith. How can I receive what I don't see? I have a huge imagination. And, and I, 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 you know, it's, it's so cool sometimes. Tonight I was dreaming that, that I was flying with the device. And uh, it, 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 it was on my, on my legs. And it was like a motorcycle. And, and I, I had so much fun. And, and, and I was kind of 20 feet above everybody. And I said, I'm going to go around Montreal. And here I, I was, I was in Montreal, and I was on, on that device. I had so much fun. <laughs> and some people say, oh, God said this. No, it's not God, I had fun. And that's just a dream. <laughs> this one is just a dream. <laughs> oh, I can interpret it for you. I can interpret also. I was having fun. <laughs> and I woke up and I told my wife, I had so much fun. You know, I was going around Montreal, and this device, and I could feel it. Yeah. I could feel the breeze, I still remember how to, to put it up, down, uh, tilt, all this, and it, it, I had so much fun. And that's what your imagination does. Now you can use your imagination to imagine what you want. See yourself, you know, my, my first new car, I bought it like this. And, and I was so used to old cars, my first car was a Renault 4. You could put a, 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 a foot through the... through the... 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 the, 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 the that, that was how bad the car was, and, and uh, it, was, it was terrible, you know? Everybody made fun of my cars, and the Citroën, oh, that was terrible, you know, it was a palace, and the thing that was hydraulic, and once the hydraulics just blew, there was oil everywhere, and the car couldn't go because it sits on the wheels. Horrible. Got to a point I said, I need to have a new car, and I had no imagination for a new car. So uh, I decided to dress up. Well, I went to uh, the Volkswagen dealer because I was dreaming of, of a Passat, yeah. uh, and uh, and I, I wanted uh, you know the like the the the, the, the one that looked like a, a van, you know the car with Passat, and it was awesome. And I entered there and said, I want to buy a Passat. Oh sure, sir. I was all well dressed, <laughs> you know. They gave me the keys. I drove the Passat and said, uh, what a garbage car. I don't want a Passat. I want a muscle car. <laughs> So I went for another one, uh, but uh, the good cars, but, but it wasn't for me, it was for an old person. And, and, uh, and, and, and so, so but I had to be there until I drove one that I liked, 
And the, the sales rep, so we close the deal, we close the deal. Sure, we close the deal, but not today. So, <laughs> and I kept praying, and the Lord did the miracle that I was able to, uh, to, to buy the car. I was able to buy the car, but I had to imagine myself inside the car, opening the window. And first I was imagining like this. <laughs> And then I said, no, I don't like it like this. I don't like this. <laughs> and, <laughs> see, and, and feeling the breeze. And I start to imagine myself. You see, that's why Jesus said, you need to become like little kids. Amen. Little kids have all this imagination. You know, give them a toy. And, and, the, and the little plastic toy is Superman flying around. And, and I, I love when, I, when, when I, I see kids coming on with the Legos and Ben is preaching and saying, look, look, it's a spaceship! And I say, oh, that's awesome, give me five, that's a spaceship! That's the imagination of a kid. Yes, yeah. We need to be uh, not, not childish, sometimes I am, I'm sorry, but <laughs> we need to be childlike in the, in the sense that we're able to imagine the things that are not. And so use, uh, and then use affirming oriented language. That is placed in the future. Example, I am happy and I enjoy exercise and nutritious food. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> Instead of saying, I'm happy. Yeah. Or I will be happy. Okay? You need to confess things to your present. Okay, how's life? Fabulous! <laughs> <laughs> How are you today? Awesome. Awesome, as always. Super fine and dandy. Yes, add, 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 as always. Yeah. Add, as always. Or add something. You know, just add something. And, and people say, oh man, you need to lose weight. I'm losing. I'm losing. Yeah. Yes, and I enjoy nutritious food. <laughs> and you hate those broccoli, you know. <laughs> and you think, yeah. <laughs> You, and people say, imagine if when you eat the broccoli that the muscle will pump, you know? I'll eat broccoli, broccoli, broccoli. But, but you eat like this knowing that it will have an effect in the future. It's like going around Jericho. You don't see the result, but eventually it gets to a point where things happen. And finally, see yourself delivering the images. This is when you look like really stupid to yourself. You go to a mirror and confess those things. In the mirror, you won't believe yourself in the first time. <laughs> you know, especially if you go in the morning, you know, and if you have uh, long hair, it's, uh, that's an advantage of having short hair or no hair. Uh, it's, it's always aligned. <laughs> and, and say it in the mirror. Say it. Say it as you mean it. And whatever, you know, you know I, I'm, see, I'm seeing myself with a happy family, my kids are faithful, and we enjoy the presence of God, and I have an awesome family. Amen. Confess it in the mirror, and eventually you believe in, in yourself. Because some, some, some people, they don't believe in themselves. That's why, you know, they see themselves in the mirror, they don't like to see themselves in the mirror. Listen, I don't like to see myself when I'm being filled. Uh, you know, it, it's kind of awkward because I imagine myself still uh, as if I was uh, like uh, in my 20s. <laughs> and, then, and then I listen to myself and when I speak it sounds great. But then I, I listen and say, oh, I need to correct this word because of my, you know, my pronunciation, my accent. You know, I need to correct this. So I, and, then, and I get all the, the bad things. But we need to encourage ourselves. And, and why? Because then what you see is what you get. If you see yourself in the mirror and you, and you say, I don't like you. I was there. I used to see myself in the mirror and say, I don't like you. I used to say, actually, I hate you when I was a Christian. I hate myself, my life, what I was doing. The life I was destroying. When I was, uh, uh, you know, dealing drugs, I hated myself. But the drugs helped me to forget that. So when I came to Christ, I had lots of baggage that I brought. And I had to relearn. And we need to learn that what we see is what you get. And, and, and let me tell you that going in circles is not necessarily a bad thing. Think about Jericho. Sometimes I talk to people and say, Oh, my life is a mess. I, think, I feel that I'm going in circles. And I always say, Good for you. What do you mean good for me? <laughs> Because if you're good going in circles, 
doing God's will, you're in the right spot. Amen. You're in the right spot. Now the question is, is that God's will? Or are you lost? Because lost in circles is bad. We God in circles is good. Because we God in circles, He's fighting the battle for you. So sometimes you need just to endure and see beyond the limit. And knowing that what you see is what you get. Let us all stand. I want to pray for you this morning. And you see when, when the, the battle happened and they blew the tr trumpets, praise was there. So that's, that's the praise. And the walls came down. Oh, must that be awesome, awesome, awesome. If there's a video library in heaven, I want to consult this one. It's one of the ones I want to check it out. I want to check creation, and I want to check this one out. Yeah. I, I, you know, it, it must have been awesome, you know, looking at those walls, just... And finally, for the first time, they were able to see the city. Strength came to those guys after seven hours of forced march listening to those annoying ram horns and they run into the city and they grab it it's ours they possess it what is the problem that's going on in your life what is the promise of god what are you looking to the problem the problem or the promise if you're looking to the promise are you seeing the promise or are you seeing the walls if you keep seeing the walls Time to continuing in circles. I hate going in circles. I hate going in circles. Especially when I have a promise of God, but I need to obey the promise of God. It's like sometimes we share with you guys, and we say, uh, you know, we're planting a church here for people that usually don't go to church. And some people say, that's awesome. Some people say, ah, nah, that's not for me. Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Why don't you uh, do that, this thing? Why don't you do that thing? No, because God said, this is the way to do it. Oh, but you're going in circles. No, you're wrong. I'm not going in circles. <laughs> what I see is what I get. And what I see, it's beyond walls. It's beyond, you know, what's, what's, uh, uh, what's, uh, what people can see. Because in the spirit, what you see is what you get. And I like to confess this to people around me. I like to say, oh Ben, you know how you're going to do, you know, then, uh, to, to travel all over the world. You know how you're going to carry your, the, the band, maybe you need an airplane, man. I don't know. <laughs> you know, so we, we need to imagine things. And, and when we imagine, you know, we, we, it's not just a figure of imagination. We confess it. We nourish our faith. And, and then when people, uh, sometimes they don't see what we see. And if you cannot see it, you need a visionary in your life. You need someone to see it for you. That's why we have church. Yeah. It's one of the reasons, not why, but it's one of the reasons. So sometimes you're stuck in your, in your life and you don't, know, don't, know, don't see further. So you need someone that can see further. And that can tell you, you know, raise your eyes. The fields are ready, you know. Lift your eyes, you know, see ahead. You know, God has better for you. And we need to be encouraged in our Christian walk. And I'm so glad that you're here and you encourage me and I can encourage you and you guys there over over the, the stream, if the stream is on, I see the, the, the stream problem is off. But, uh, but uh, we, we need really to grasp this sense that what we see is what we 